Hello again. Uh, try again. Don't disturb us last time. Right. Um, yes, I just want to. Um, I'm, I'm starting doing these videos regularly. Um, um, and really, it's for the love of bees um, and easy beekeeping. Um, making sure everything's bee friendly for you and for the bees. Now, today, I'm just going to quickly show you what I do about building uh, frames. Uh, all frames obviously come in different sizes. Uh, I use manly frames. These are the ones with a point on the one side and a flat on the other. Um, and that is so that when the bees um, properly sit together, it's easier for you to break apart um, to move the frames. Um, but if you're going to be like me, uh, no intervention. Um, I leave my bees to it. Um, they know better than I do, um, so that's how it goes. But uh, I just want to show you how I um, put my hives together. But if you would do me a favour and either subscribe so I notify you of the next video, like, uh, comment, that's really the main thing for me at the moment as I'm new to doing this. Uh, I just want to make sure that. Um, I, I give people what they're actually looking for. Um, so yes, please comment, negative or positive. Um, I'll probably dump the negatives and <laughs> read the positives. But um, that's it. And then if it is good and you've got friends at beekeepers, please share it. Now, depending on where you buy these and how you keep them, they can be very difficult to put together if they get damp in them. Because once this spreads here, across this junction here, these don't tend to spread as much and, and then you have a, a difficulty assembling them. Now, whoever I've got these off, um, they are, you know, they're a better fit. The best ones I've ever had is off Easy Beer or Easy Pet. Um, and then, um, yeah, so get both, both sides in. a harder one than normal but uh, anyway it's in uh, try and get them sort of so they, so they don't rock on, on on the board i'm using a chopping board and i don't use the brad nails with pliers or hammers or whatever because you belt your fingers too often so it's just a case of um, one brad nail in there and then if, if they protrude just tap them in with a hammer but once you've got your gun loaded correctly, then you know that's fine. And then I put a diagonal one in here on the on the manly on the on the chamfered side to make sure because what you've got to realize is the weight of comb on a 14 by 12 is, is quite considerable. Um, and then on the bottom bar. Uh, the bottom bars here, now you're supplied with two because they're assuming you're going to bring comb all the way down, sorry, comb, foundation all the way down um, to the bottom. Now, I never do because I don't want what I cut. I know it's wax and everything, but if the bees haven't built it, it's, it's not there. So I just use it as a starter strip, uh, two inches in the top. So, yes, I put that bar in diagonally. Now, from the front of that one to the back of this one. And then I just hold it like that and then just put a nail in slightly diagonally. Make sure it's got it. And that's it. That, that's ready then. Now on the next on the next um, stage, um, I then get the Stanley knife. Now I assemble them before cutting this bar out. 
and the reason is I've cut too many pit pullovers. So I just do it like that. This bar then stops me cutting my pullover and getting into trouble. Um, so that's it. Keep it clean. Um, and then I get my foundation. I buy, you have to be careful because you can buy the bigger sheets, but it tends to cost more. Um, so I, I just get these and I cut them into four. Now, um, so as they're eight, eight by twelves, these, I do 200, put my straight edge on, align it down the comb, so it's exactly the same all the way down the comb, and then just cut. And I'm doing, there I'm doing three at a time, sometimes I do four, and then I'll do this side, two inch, put the, put the straight edge against the blade, Align it up with the comb all the way down. And then go for the middle of that. Uh, it's not critical. The bees aren't going to come, come and tell you they're upset because you've got one quarter inch bigger than the other. Um, they're just going to be happy they've got something to start on. Uh, what you will find though is um, when um, when they want to build drone comb, as this is brood uh, foundation, um, they'll they'll um, when when they've got the foundation here, they'll suddenly do the drone below it. It's quite comical sometimes. You've got a real thick band of drone. Um, but anyway, yes. So now then, um, because the these are cut obviously with a guillotine in big stacks. The edge is fur here, these, these are quite thick. So I just run the back of the Stanley knife down each edge like that, squat it a bit, and then slide it in like that so it's just dropped in the slots. Uh, hold it down like that. And then on, on the piece that you've relieved from uh, the top bars, this piece here that's uh, not quite cut through when you get them, so you just cut them out together. There's, a, there's, a, there's always a residual edge. Sometimes it just peels off uh, and it's great, but just get it out of the way. So put it towards you in the top, press, press down quite firmly so you're squeezing the foundation and then shoot a brad. And I, I'm only using uh, Three quarter inch or 20 mil grads um, because I found that the 25 mils are good because they'll go right through here but then what happens is when you're using them here they become a problem because they just stick out here where your fingers are when you're manipulating the, the frames and it's, it just gets a bit annoying especially if you're like me and you have to wear gloves um, they get tangled on them and you can shock shock the bar or jog the bees uh, and if you want to upset bees you jog and bump things. Uh, one of my mentors was really good, very very clever uh, when I started beekeeping but very clumsy and I could always tell if we'd been in together because next time I came they weren't happy because they were expecting to be bumped and knocked again. Um, but anyway uh, that, that's what I've got then. Now then um, there's a lot of talk about um, what's good, what's bad. This is what I do. I just put a two inch starter strip in. The bees build down. I've normally got at least four inches below the bottom bar. So the bees build down to about, when they've got about four inches here, they build down to about here and then they curve it round and back up. And this, because you put it diagonally, this in the middle is dead centre of the comb and they just naturally build either side of it. Um, if for some reason the frame's hanging crooked, slightly at an angle in the, in the hive, they might build to the one side. So um, it's important that these hang true in the hive. Make sure they're not twisted by putting on a flat board like this and see they're not twisted. And the stack I've done there uh, before 
um, you can see that you know they're all fairly good now. Now the next thing is um, when when you measure these um, manly frames, they they come out. They vary between 34 and 36 mil. Um, now these are these are 33. But anyway, um, B space is you know the bone of contention with everything, and B's need four and a half mil or nine millimeters between this frame and the next frame. So when you've got the two frames in there and they're building their brood comb, this is just for brood, when they're building the brood comb, then um, <coughs> they need nine millimeter gap to work in and to be happy. If it gets bigger than nine millimeters, they'll probably brace between the two. And if it's tighter, they will might go slightly crooked uh, to join the two together. So. It, it is important the bee space. So I found out from when I started beekeeping, uh, because I come from an engineering background, mechanical and civil, I started measuring everything and I found there were some fundamental mistakes in measurement. Um, a lot of, pit, a lot of um, um, brood boxes and supers were, were nine mils short of being the right length. Um, so anyway, when, when you do build your, the, your frames, I really, really suggest you get these. Now these, these plastic frame spacers, they do, they do a, a few things really. Now this, these ones are 38 and, a, 38 and a half millimetres, and that to me is perfect. Uh, and then you put them on, obviously, on like that and, and try and keep them so the blocked end the in the open end is on the inside and the blocked end is on the outside so that they touch so then then when 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 it's on the ledge of the hive there's there's no way for the bees to come out which is ideal the other thing they do is they help prevent rocking in the hive because you know it broadens the, the the landing area there for the frame and they don't rock as much because if they rock the bees will brace them the bees do not want uh, a moving sort of table if you like um, so so that's the important thing there um, now as I say you know depending on what you want if if you're in the UK and you're north of Stoke, I would say, um, I would go one either one brood chamber of 14 by 12s, but if or two of eight by 12s, because if 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 you only have one eight by 12 brood chamber, there is not going to be sufficient stores that they brought in to keep them through the winter. Um, and another thing I do, I don't take any honey myself unless it's left over when they start really bringing the, 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 the new, um, when they start loading honey for the new season in sometimes March, April, May. But I don't like to take it until about April, May because I don't want them to be without what they've decided they want for the winter okay so i hope uh, that's made sense but as i say please click and like uh, uh, and give me some feedback thank you and i'll be doing some more videos shortly